Hey guys, and welcome to my patch notes review for the Dancing Allies and Server Capacity Edition. For the top changes in this patch, at least, <laughs> what they are considering the top changes is all allies will now dance when you dance. So if you type forward slash dance in your chat, your ally will now dance with you. So that's a little cool little update. Um, the other thing is made improvements to our server code, which will allow us to get more out of our hardware. Yes, that means increased capacity. It doesn't. <laughs> um, their queue times went up even higher. And I don't know why. I'm not going to check the player count right now, but it did take me an hour to get in. So that's a little uh, longer than they were. But uh, they're not degrading, so I can't say that they're um, degrading their hardware. They're actually improving it. But just probably not at the rate that they think they are. But, you know, we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And we're just going to move on. New in the store, Chaos Chests have been randomized. Retro week this week. So if you type in forward slash welcome. Uh, this a little effect or graphic right here is actually different than this Chaos Chest. So uh, it looks like they didn't want to change the actual Chaos Chest in your inventory. But they did change it for this little still graphic. And the top loot in this week is a Santa Barbarian costume. So that's pretty cool. Um, the starter pack has been adjusted to now include three days of patron and a class coin. It no longer contains the ally, and we will be retroactively granting the class coin to anyone who previously purchased a starter pack. Now, if I remember correctly, I mean, this was a couple weeks ago that they introduced the starter pack, but I remember there being the class coin and then they took it out, and I think they're reintroducing it to the pack. And the ally, I don't remember exactly which one it was, but I think it was one of these Shadow Arena ones. The Shadow Egg. I think it was either one of these Shadow Knights or it was a boot. I don't remember completely, but they are retroactively granting the class coin to anyone who previously purchased a starter pack. So I guess there was never a class coin in the starter pack. They did remove it some from some pack. I just don't remember which. Um, but that means that if you purchase a starter pack and you did not get your class coin, you will still get it after this update. And you should already have it. Uh, moving on to challenges. Tier 3 and Tier 4 are now available only in U4 through U6 and U6 respectively. That means the Tier 3 challenge is now available up to U4, or starting from U4. Uh, it used to be only U5 and U6, so I guess they're allowing earlier players to get in. And the Tier 4 is now only available in U6 and not U5. Okay, so loot. An assortment of new uncommon and rare face and hat styles have been added to the game. Uh, this is a addition that they added last week, but they didn't really. Uh, that's something you'll kind of figure <laughs> uh, with Trove. They say they add stuff when they don't. <laughs> it's hard to explain because I don't want to call them liars. But they do that a lot. They say they add something, but then next week they'll actually add it. And again, I explained that in the last week's video, where it is just to um, give the older players that have already unlocked all these styles in the newbie and blue zone um, something to get towards mastery. This is more styles while you're leveling up the new Tomb Raider. So moving on to classes, let me scroll down. Minions. Fatrixer's Decoy, Pirate Captain's Pretend Pirate, and Tomb Raider's Minions now have a short window of invincibility after receiving damage. This I did not expect. Um, if you play Trove, you would realize that you can't be one-shot. That means once you hit 1 HP, you are invincible for like a split second. So that way you can potion up. It's kind of a way to help uh, new players not just get one-shot all the time. And from this wording right here... It sounds like they're doing that for minions, except every time they're hit, and not just uh, once they're about to die. And minions were already powerful enough, um, tank-wise. <laughs> so, I guess the pretend pirate, the pirate captain's pretend pirate was kind of weak. But this seems like they're going to last a lot longer now, and they may be reverting it. <laughs> that, I don't know, it just seems very overpowered to me. Um, but moving on, enemies now aggro, Fatrixers, Clone, Pretend, Pirate, Pirate Captain, Pretend, Pirate, I keep messing that up, and Tomb Raider's minions whenever they are in range instead of just when they're spawned. Again, something they were supposed to add last week. Uh, if you've been stopping by my 
stream, you would know that I've been playing this Tomb Raider for about 20 hours, and... <laughs> uh, again, I don't know if I said this, they added that last week, but they never actually added it, they just said they did, but they didn't. So hopefully now they are true to their word and they are adding it. Um, because that's pretty annoying when you spawn your minions, they're supposed to be a tank, but they, uh, the enemies don't target them that much. Um, Tomb Raider's minions and Fade Trickster's clones now stop emoting when you move. That's kind of, uh, the dance. When you would dance with your minions out, they would stay dancing until you went out of range and they had to teleport to you. Now, once you move, they'll follow you again. A uh, Candy Barbarian, the Ace Chrome Cone can now be aimed, which is the Candy Barbarian's ultimate. So if you hold it down, uh, I don't know if you can see it because the player model is kind of obstructing it, but there's a little pulsing uh, circle on the floor where you can now aim your Chrome Cone instead of being, you know, the two meters in front of you permanently like it used to be. Uh, Fate Trickster, the Spike Thorns, FX, and allowing debuffs their basic attack. Again, same of this, or same thing as before. They supposedly did that last week, but they didn't. <laughs> There's not much to say about it. Uh, Ice Age, the Ice Crash now targets enemies and is no longer blocked by grass. So that is the Ice Age right click. So that sounds like if you use your Ice Crash near an enemy, like you say you target the ground next to an enemy, it's going to put it on top of their head now, so it's a little easier to target. Uh, Shadow Hunter fix bug with Radiant Arrow preventing it from aiming through walls properly. So Radiant Arrow is where is he? The Shadow Hunter's right click, and the um, Shadow Marked enemies. I'm I never ran into this, but I guess the Shadow Marked enemies you weren't able to hit through walls, and now you can. Uh, like you should. A uh, Tomb Raider. This is the one that a lot of people have been looking forward to. Minions have been buffed. Bone Trage minions, which are your right click. Minions, your little skeletons. Um, deal more damage, receive less damage when hit, and decay more slowly. So this makes them tankier and deal a little bit more damage, which in turn means you can get higher tiered golems out a lot easier than before because if you're like me and you're playing U5, U6, or U5, I'm not in U6 yet with this guy, he's only level 29, um, you could not get more than a 4 or 5 minion golem out uh, Goliath, I mean. I always call them golems. Because, one, you did not have enough damage to kill enemies to get extra souls quick enough before your minions died. And two, your minions did die before you can wait out the 5 second cooldown between souls to get a 4 to 5 minion golem out. So this helps people get those 4 to 5 minion golems out initially. And then once you're in combat and killing things, um, you can get a 6 minion golem out uh, a little bit easier. It was actually almost impossible to get a 6 minion golem out if you were solo in U5 and U6, of course. Um, also, the Grave Goliath deals more damage and has an additional attack. Uh, again, I haven't tested anything. I log in whenever I do these patch notes videos, so that way I'm kind of surprised with you guys. And uh, it's my like first time reading through them. An additional attack, I don't know if that means they have a different style attack. Kind of, maybe they have a AoE attack now. Maybe like overhead smash. And they deal more damage, which will uh, buff its single target damage, because that's what the Goliath is. He has a big single target damage to help the uh, Tomb Raider, because Tomb Raider alone is a AoE class, and his minions kind of give him that single target damage. So, again, I have not tested this buff out, and I don't know exactly if you're able to get 6 minion golems out solo, but I'm hoping that's what it is. Again, I'm going to be doing my Let's Play, so... We'll figure it out then. You guys will probably figure it out way before I do. Uh, or before you see that I do. So, um... Yeah, that was the big... The big update for me, at least. Alright, so adventuring. Banshee's Boon effect should now pulse for the entirety of the effect. Um... I usually play in a group because a lot of people want to play with me. So I never noticed that the Banshee's Boon did not actually last the whole uh, energy bar. At least that's what it's saying right here. So that would be a good fix if it wasn't because that's your huge AoE uh, damage. So that's good. Um, automatically switch to adventure mode inventory panel when using loot collector. Uh, before, if you were in your build mode and you used the loot collector, you would be stuck in your block screen until you backed out. And then you had to switch back to adventure mode and then use it again. Now, 
You see I'm in build mode, press E, and it auto does it for you. So that's a nice little touch right there. Uh, three star dungeon should now use the correct portal on the outside when completed. Um, I never ran into that, so I mean that sounds good. <laughs> bug fixes and polish. Fix a bug where you got double the credit for the block destroyed stat when destroying blocks with bombs. So that was kind of like an exploit, I guess. I never looked into that. They fix that. Fix a bug where debug text would appear after closing the main menu. Uh, will no longer tell you that your inventory is full when it's not in cases where you pick everything up anyways. Um, that was kind of a bug that I I didn't get annoyed by it, but you just notice it. Um, because you have like one or two spots and it says your inventory is full when it's not. And it did that a lot, so it kind of spammed you. Um, so I'm glad they take that out. That's actually been in the game forever. Uh, fix a bug where the forge and tooltip stat comparisons were sometimes off by one. Players now remain mounted when switching worlds. That's a nice little touch right there too. Uh, fix some sorting issues on the exit portal so all layers are visible. I don't exactly know what that means. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, they're fixing stuff. Uh, fix a bug where players could be told their inventory is full while looting even if they had room. Again, that's just more of the same thing. Uh, it was telling you your inventory is full when you had one or two spots available. Change the way last login time is sorted for calculating consecutive days logged in to fix a bug related to the stat. That is amazing for me because, let's look at my badges. Consecutive days. I have been on one consecutive day <laughs> since the badges came out. And now I can finally, hopefully, get the 90 consecutive day and the midnight mantle. Which, for me, I log in every day anyways, so this, you know, this could have been done... <laughs> A long time ago, but I was my character was bugged out, and I've always been at one. So hopefully that's fixed, and from today moving forward, I can get that. Um, let me see where was I? A message is now displayed by the client if a purchase succeeds after closing the store. So that's a nice little confirmation, uh, extra layer of confirmation to help you um, notice that you got your purchase even if you close the window by accident. Fix effect that stays after finishing curse goals. Kami of the Cursed Council Mount should now have unique visual effects, and the Dark Infinium Wings should now appear as expected. Alright, so those ones, I have been reading some posts on Reddit that they were broken, so that's good. A lot of players are going to be happy about that. And community creations, these were, again, said they were added last week, but they weren't. Now they are. New Novice Undead Heal Layer from both Stedums and Josh Edo. So, um... If this is because I know a lot of people started joining Trove once it came out. Um, I don't, I'm not calling the devs liars, but this is just something you'll notice if you go back in my previous patch notes videos, this happens a lot. So if something says it's fixed and it's not, uh, that just means that they didn't actually update it and uh, they will sometime soon. But with that out of the way, I just want to make sure that people don't think that I'm like bad talking the devs or anything like that. And uh, that's going to be it. the end of this video. Remember, if you need help with anything and you want me to make a guide on it, post it in the comments below. And if this video gets 5 likes by my next video, I'll post a guide on the top comment. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys next time.